with around more than 1 million annual amputations globally each year. According to one every 30 seconds, there should be no doubt in our minds that the prosthetic limb has become a key creation for many in today's society. My name is Alana Veronik and I'm currently studying as a student at Doncaster Gardens Primary. I'm here today to talk to you about the evolution of one of the most valuable, complex and revolutionising inventions in the history of mechanical engineering, the prosthetic limb. Now to kick things off, what exactly is a prosthetic limb and what must the limb provide the amputee with? In medical terms, it can be described as an artificial limb in replace of a missing body part. This can be due to a disease, injury, surgery, traumatic event, or from a condition since birth. The implants themselves are professionally designed to perfectly mimic the amputee's missing limb. Their sole purpose is to provide the wearer with the same mobility, comfort, and practicality as a real body part could provide. And yes, yeah, so maybe we haven't gotten to that point yet, but science and engineering is definitely making progress and showing signs of eventually getting there. Now, let's talk finance, friends. An artificial leg can cost anywhere between 5000 to well over 100000 Australian dollars. The same goes for an artificial arm, although the price really does depend on the type of limb replacement needed and the model. Over the past decades, the price of a limb has and continues to fluctuate due to the immense improvements in both the design and the mechanisms in the prosthesis. New models and designs are currently being introduced, which constantly has a toll on the cost. The creation of the prosthetic limb dates way back to around 800 BC, where the earliest example of a prosthesis was actually a toe. That's right, a toe. The first prosthesis, although small, was especially important in Egyptian culture, because it was required in order to wear the traditional Egyptian sandals. Eventually, the prosthetic arm was being created out of iron. Then, as society began to develop, so did artificial limbs. Dr. Ambroise Pear was the first to introduce hinged hands and legs with locking knee joints. Next came the American Civil War, and you can bet that the number of amputees increased drastically. James Hanger, who was the first amputee during the war, went on to invent the hanger limb, a prosthesis made up using a combination of old oak barrel staves, rubber bumpers, and nails. Then, after much tinkering and modifying, soon humanity completely reinvented the bionic limb. Today, we're using materials including carbon fiber, titanium, and variants of thermoplastics. The limbs that are purely powered by the electrical nerve signals and muscles that are captured by the electrodes. These signals then trigger the artificial limb to basically connect the empty stump to the prosthesis. Or in other words, we're basically using mind power to control the prosthetic limb. Today, many amputees can seek help from a prosthesis to provide them with their perfect limb. But there are always places, for example, like Limbs for Life. Limbs for Life is an amazing non-profit organisation that focuses on empowering amputees and their families and providing them with support whilst they're going through their limb loss journey. They also provide awareness to the general public about the challenges many amputees face and will help and support you whilst you find your perfect limb. I was incredibly lucky to be able to speak to one of their amazing staff members, who provided me with a few answers to some questions that I had. I'm currently here with Fiona. Thank you so much for being here today. Now, here is my first question for you. In your opinion, do you think that the design and the mechanism of a prosthesis will evolve over the next decade? Technology is moving so fast, it's hard to predict what will come in the field of prosthetics in the future. Some researchers think it might be brain control prosthetics through the use of artificial intelligence in the not too distant future, but any big changes in prosthetics takes time. And for my second question, in your opinion, what is the best type of prosthetic limb? The best type is the one that is comfortable, safe, and meets the needs and goals of each individual amputee. There's really no one size fits all type of prosthetic. Thank you so much for your answers. It is great to hear from a professional. If you're looking to donate to the Limbs for Life Foundation, head to www.limbsforlife.org.au slash donate. Thank you. So I'm pretty sure that it is safe to say that the creation of the artificial limb has benefited many in today's society. The evolution of the bionic limb has been immense over the past centuries. These limbs have saved, helped and improved life for many amputees. But we can be sure of one thing. As time goes on, the design and mechanisms will only improve. Thank you for joining me today as we discuss the evolution of the artificial limb. See you next time. Bye!